So today we've got an unusual episode for you here on uh, Sheet Metal is Fun. You get to see a day in the life of a sheet metal dude. So today we're going to work on that sign. It's 110 years old. Some of the letters are rusted. And we're going to make new letter parts today. I'll meet you guys inside. It's going to be a good one today. Sheet metal can fly. Sheet metal is cool. And last but not least, sheet metal is fun. Look at that face on that spark plug butterfly. Well, we have an interesting one here on Sheet Metal is Fun. Today we are restoring some of the letters on a sign that's around 110 years old. Today is uh, 2023, and I think the sign is from 1913, so around 110, 110 years old. So this is the bottom part of the letter. I think we're gonna include where I sawed the letter off. We want to leave as much of the original sign intact as we can. So if you want to come in, let's show you how we're going to make the bottom of a letter. On the, uh, the letter has this edging soldered to it all the way around. But on the bottom of the letter, there's a straight section. And the people who made the letters uh, 110 years ago, they bent that around. So what we're going to do, we see this seam right here. And there's a seam right there. So we're gonna start doing that. We found a piece of metal on the shelf. This is 5 8 So we're gonna set our scribe at 5 8 And what I've done is I've marked 5 8 of an inch up from the bottom. And then we're gonna trace out the damaged part and leave this intact so we can bend it up. So now we're going to lay the old one on top, put on my reading glasses. This is the inside of the letter. And like we've talked before, once we're laying this out, we understand this project better than any other time in the process right now because we've already done some of the thinking. Since this is the inside, we're gonna mark that as the inside. Now up here on the top, since we can't solder to the sign, we don't wanna add any acid to the sign that would continue to corrode. We're going to come over here and we're going to make a quarter of an inch. We're going to add a quarter of an inch because when we get ready to put the new one on, we're going to slide it under the existing letter. Now I've got that. Let's cut that off. Uh, some of the extra because we talked about the 8515 rule I don't want to try to make a very intricate cut whenever I have all this material hanging over so the first thing we're going to do cut some of this extra off So the closer I cut it to the pattern, the easier it will be. I'm gonna turn my snips upside down and they cut just the same way. It all depends on how you feel like cut. I can see my line a little better. Trim off a little. 
little bit more. Now we talked about one of our other videos, how there's always an upside and a downside. Anytime we snip something, anytime we cut it, we're stretching the metal to its point of failure and that's what cutting, that's what shearing is. So since this is the inside, I wanna make sure that I turn this this way. So this is gonna be a left cut. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the line very well. You might. So the reason I used my lefts is I turned the hawk bill up toward X. So that means the front of the letter has the good finish on it. And since we're gonna finish this cut, we're gonna use our reds now, since we're going the opposite direction. Again, this is the back side, this is the front side, so we want this front to have the good finish. We want that to have the good finish. So we're gonna cut this one with our greens. saw me just flip the snip over that was just for my own personal comfort it it changes the position of my elbow and this is just a better way to cut for right now make yourself comfortable every chance you get So I've made sure the, the bad side or the hawk bill is on the back side of our letter and the front side has a real nice finish. But we're also gonna double check this with our little hammer. Anytime you're cutting very, very uh, short radiuses, it makes it difficult on the snip, and sometimes it'll cause that lip to turn up. I see a little spot on the end here. I want to change. There we go. All right, let's go over to break and bend this letter up. Then we'll have the same base that they have. All right, we're gonna bend this up 90. The material we're using today is 26 gauge galvanized. That's, oddly enough, that's what the original sign was made of. So if you've ever wondered how long this material can last, this sign, like I said, 110 years old. The only reason that these letters have malfunction is the top of the letter, water ran in behind, and then couldn't escape out the bottom. So as the water rose inside of the hollow letter, it, uh, that's where the corrosion came from. But if these letters would have had a, a weep hole in the bottom, they would probably still be good. Some of the letters do have weep holes and they're still in good shape. So now that we have this flange, let's go over and put the edge around here. We're gonna solder this letter together. We haven't had our soldering lesson yet, but this is a good day. This will be the pre-lesson lesson. So while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to warm up, 
what um, this is copper this is a, a, a bar of copper and there's a flame heating the copper from the back side and it's going to get this copper to probably around 800 degrees this just happens to be the way I like to solder we can use uh, if you've been around a sheet metal shop you've seen the oven and you shove the irons in and then as they cool you change them off and you put one back in there but this one we never have to change out so what we're going to do is we are going to duplicate this letter so we're going to add this band around the perimeter of the letter so what i'm going to do we're going to start right here i'm going to clamp this piece of aluminum to the table we're using aluminum because the solder won't stick to it then we're going to clamp our letter the aluminum now this material is so light we're going to bend this piece around but I've got this nice uh, hammer handle take a look so what we're gonna do is rather than try to measure this out we are gonna clamp that on there we're gonna add some muriatic acid Now here's a trick, whenever I'm working on something that ordinarily, whenever we're soldering, we're adding solder and we're melting it with the iron. So that's a two-handed operation. But right now, I wanna be able to manipulate this piece. So I took our solder and I cut a bunch of pieces. They're all around a half of an inch long. So now I can take one of these, a little piece of solder, put it right in there. Can you see where that is? There it is right there. So now I can manipulate the piece and with the iron, I can put my piece where I want it that I'm gonna reach in here Going to continue to hold this to the solder cools and now I have a little tack solder down there you can see that solder and now what we're going to do is we're just going to work our way around the edge of the letter a little bit more muriatic acid I try not to pour it too much I just put a few drops in the cup Then whenever you knock it over with your elbow or your hammer, you haven't made that a, a big a mess as you ordinarily would. So it doesn't make any sense to fill this up all the way. Now I'm going to add this muriatic acid. So the muriatic acid, the function that it's performing is called tinny, T-I-N-N-I-N-G. And it takes the shine off of the galvanized, which... By the way, galvanizing, you have to add the ING because galvanize is not a word that we would use in metal. This metal is galvanized, which is a process that uh, a guy invented and named it after a friend of his. I think his friend was Galvani. This goes way back. 
So this material that we're using, 26 gauge galvanized, is because it has been through the galvanizing process, and that process is taking raw steel and dipping it through a molten bath of zinc. So a galvanized metal, like you see in all of our sheets, this is, this is steel, it's raw steel that has been dipped into a hot bath of zinc. And that process is called the galvanizing process. So, uh, like we said, look how, look, how, look how well it works for, for repelling rust. If these letters would have had a weep hole, you and I would be doing something else today. Making a funnel could be anything. So I'm going to use another one of our small pieces because I want to manipulate this piece. A little more acid. The reason we're using an aluminum block is because the solder will not stick to the aluminum. Now that I've tacked this band around the perimeter of the letter with my pieces, I can come back in here and fill the empty spaces with solder. It's going to spray a little bit of water. The water stops because the acid is a corrosion, a, a, a corrosion process, and the water actually stops it in its tracks, so it does not continue to corrode. So now we have. I'm going to cut this right here. So now we've added the perimeter around the one side of the letter to the other. We're on a roll. I'm going to wipe off some of that water because the water contributes to cooling and it may absorb enough cooling that inhibit that it made inhibit the uh, soldering process. All right, let's do that high tech part. We're going to bend this around here. Looks like it's shaped about like our hammer handle. Small changes, good, I like it. Let's add some acid in there. I'm gonna put in one of my little pieces that I've cut. Every once in a while, the impurities in the environment collect on the soldering iron. So I always keep a brush around to clean it off. The cleaner it is, the better it's gonna work. Look at that. So I cut those small pieces. Again, the reason I cut the little pieces is with my left hand, 
I'm manipulating the wrapper. With my right hand, we're soldering. Now, since we use the hammer for part of it, let's use the hammer for the rest of it. Part of the reason I use the hammer is because it's so hot, it's gonna burn me. So you can see our side is following our letter, following nicely. So we're gonna do a tack right there. Again, we didn't try to estimate the length of the wrapper. We just let it be long and that gave us a handle to work with too for working, working our piece. So I'm gonna come out here to the end. Put that right where we want it. Now you see the places where I've tacked it. We can go back in with our solder. We'll start in the middle between two tacks. If you go back right to the same tack, you could actually melt that and the, it, can, it can come apart again. So we don't want to re-melt the part we've already soldered. Now we've got one right here. I'll be with you in just a minute, Marcus. You can come in, but I'll be with you in just a second. Look at that. I'm gonna cool that with a little bit of water. Now, we're gonna stand this up. Let's solder up these last two seams. We'll cool that off. Let's cut off the extra. Turn off the soldering iron. All right, everybody, we're back. Today is kind of an unusual show. It's about uh, about a day in the life. So today we have the uh, privilege to help restore uh, a very old sign from our town. Some of the letters collected water and over, over time, over the years, it corroded the bottom of the letters out. You can see some of the corrosion here in the bottom of the letters. That's the top of the sign. So this is one of the letters that had the worst corrosion. This is the O. And there were pieces missing from all the way around. So I took it off and I made us a new one. So I used this as a pattern. We want to try to save as much of the old sign as we can. And uh, what we've done here, this arrow points to a drain hole. So if this letter would have originally had a drain hole. You can see where the water level was as the water dripped into the top. You can see how high the water level was on the back side of the letter. So I couldn't save any part of this, so we just made a whole new letter. We got that on. We're not gonna solder our new letters onto the, the sign. We would have to lay it flat, and this sign is very heavy. 
and uh, but I also don't like to add acid to an old sign because what the acid does its job is to make the metal susceptible to corrosion because the acid gets in there and it takes the shine it takes the glaze off and uh, it, that's what gives it that's what gives the metal teeth so the solder can stick to it but the problem with that is when you have uh, acid in an enclosed letter like this the acid will be in behind and it will continue to cause corrosion uh, until it finally exposes itself again and turns this letter into a letter like this one so I just wanted you to see the original O we took it off and made a pattern made a brand new one and that's bonded back on the sign we replaced the bottom half of the letter P here I think we have some pictures of that inside we've also let's come over here to this side going to have to put up with the noise from the traffic because we're working on a trailer in our parking lot and we're on a busy street. So here is the new lower part of the R. It's going to go on here. Man, I like that. So what I'm gonna do is, we're not gonna solder this in place. So this letter is 5 eighths of an inch thick. So I just bent up a piece of channel from some stock that was laying around behind the shear. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it off right there. Sometimes the work doesn't have to be precise and that's good because the more precise it is the longer it takes to accomplish the work so sometimes we can get away with some low precision work which is what we have here this is going to go behind the letter nobody's ever going to see it it's only going on there to help us accomplish the bonding process. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to screw this channel to the sign. And then we're going to bond our letter to the channel. There we go. earlier when you're putting in a screw you need to count the, the revolutions and stop when the screw stops or else you strip it out so we're going to bond this in place while we wait for the adhesive to dry. I'm going to put a little on the back side of the letter. And this is going to give us a better chance at adhesion. Anytime you can go glue to glue, you have a better chance of success.
back of here. There we go. Now with any adhesive, they have to add a carrier in the adhesive and that's what makes it gunnable. That's what makes you have the, uh, the, allow, the allowability to press the, the adhesive through a tube. So all of these adhesives are all gonna have a component that's gonna evaporate. And so the dried adhesive will be less substantial. It'll be smaller than it is in the tube because it's gonna lose that carrier. Uh, in paint, it would be paint thinner. The paint thinner evaporates and leaves the paint behind. But the paint thinner is what allows you to apply the paint with a paint gun. So there's also carriers in all the adhesives. So I said that to say this, that the, the finished application of adhesive will be slightly thinner than it is whenever it first went on. So what you're gonna actually notice is that whenever the adhesive is set up, it will actually compress itself as the carrier evaporates. So even though we might, this might be a little out right now, as the, uh, as the adhesive dries, it will pull the letter in and get tighter. So I've begun the cut over here, coming over on this side. Oh, you might be able to see it right from there. And... Clean metal, and I've made a cut with a razor wheel. And what I'm gonna do now is this old letter is soldered to the backing. I'm just gonna chisel this away slightly. So we just wanted to be very cautious that we don't cause any more dam damage to the <laughs> to the backing. So here's our next letter. We're gonna take this in the shop and make a new one. I'll meet you. All right, folks, that's it. So that's how we rebuild letters on a 110 year old sign that says the city of Paris. This is right here in our little town. And so we wanted to leave as much of the original letters as we could. That's why we replaced just the parts that were bad. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. It was interesting. This is a day in the life of a sheet metal dude. Thanks for coming by. Sheet metal is fun. <laughs>